students as we have discussed the process of fertilization and before that the formation of gametes and all after that the most crucial and important thing remains that the post fertilization changes so for that we need to know the female reproductive system very well whatever we have done earlier we have to bring all the information in front of our eyes and we can proceed with that now this is the female reproductive system that i have drawn for you so i will be taking half portion of it so i am rubbing the half one this is the half portion that will remain for us in the explanation okay so this is the female reproductive system and this is the fallopian tube now see the sperm enters and it comes here passes through the isthmus and there already i have spoken you to you related to the egg that enters the infantibulum to the ostia so no need of going for all these things fertilization takes place in the ampulla or in the ampulla isthmus junction so that one here is the a and the fertilization has taken place got it so this is the a which has been fertilized after fertilization remember it becomes zygote clear then comes the cleavage from where the today study starts what is the cleavage is the division of the zygote and it forms two blastomeres one is little bit bigger and another is little bit smaller so two this is bigger this is smaller and it takes around 13 uh, hours for the first blastomere then comes the second blastomere in the second blastomere what you are finding the bigger one this is the bigger one first of all will be undergoing dividing so from two there will be three and ultimately what happens the smaller one divides so we are finding the formation of four blastomere so it takes how many hours 30 hours so first cleavage second cleavage takes around 60 hours got it so finding the occurrence of four cells these are same as that of mitosis that means that is equational division you are not finding any reduction now moment the zygote is formed but there is little bit difference with that of the mitosis what is that you see the volume or the space is same zygote and these after the first cleavage second cleavage after the other formation also the shape and the size remains the same so division is going on size of the cell keep on decreasing that is the difference we are only getting next one next one is in 72 hours can you get my point third cleavage will be in 72 hours ultimately what you are finding you are finding the occurrence of occurrence of uh 16 to 32 cells total how many 16 to 32 cells so these are becoming now a solid ball like structure that solid ball of cell is called morula m o r u l a is called the morula is it okay to you know now here and it comes here fertilized so morula is from solid ball of cell 16 to 32 cells okay now what happens gradually gradually the 
Morula, all the developing embryo, you can tell, reaches the itrias here. Clear? And it takes around four to six days. Four to six days to reach the itrias. How many days it takes? Four to six days. Now the seventh day, try to get my point. On the seven days, there will be implantation. What is the meaning of implantation? Implantation is the process by which the developing embryo or the cleavage that happened in the zygote gets cemented in the endometrial layer, not sticking. Cementing. That means a portion of the endometrial layer will be eroded. And this enters inside clear yeah? and that entering it takes place on the seventh day clear to you now one thing i would like to uh, make you clear that when i was discussing this one there was another layer which remains always around the jagot always it remains okay This is called Jonah Pellucida. Z O N A P E L L U C I D A. We have discussed it earlier. What is the function of Jonah Pellucida? It doesn't allow the cleavage of the blastomia that has formed to stick or to get cemented to the unwanted position. That is the most important function. So, these are the blastomias. Clear? Now, what happens? Let's come to the next part. In the next part, what we are finding? The outer cell, outer cell of this morula gradually tries to bring the nourishment from the mucosal lining of the yttrias. Good? It? And gradually, it becomes much more flattened like this. Outer one, it tries to bring nourishment from the mucus lining. This is called tropoblast. What is it called? It is called tropoblast. Tropo. Now, what is the function of tropoblast? It gives protection. It helps in also getting the nutrient from the yttrias. Got it? Now what happens you see? One other function and development is happening. This one, the morula cells now becomes flattened. Like. It becomes flattened and tends to take the form of a cyst. Now we are finding another part. What is happening now? Here. The Jonopolisida suppose and uh, suppose here Jonopolisida always will be remaining, okay? This is the tropoblast, it remains. We are coming after this stage, this stage is called blastocyst, okay? So what is happening now? This tropoblast remaining here. Morular cells that were there now become flattened like that of cyst and it comes here and forms the embryonal knob. Good it? It forms embryonal no, this is called embryonal. No, but be sure of one thing tropoblast has nothing to do with the direct embryo that will be formed, but it plays an important role in bringing the nourishment. So, see what is happening now. This part is called blastocyone. What it is called? Blastocyone. Cyone means what? Cavity. 
ब्लास्टो सियोल सियोल मीन्स वॉट देट इज कॉल द केविटी Now, blastocyol has in it the blasto fluid, which has come from the mucus lining, all the uterus, from different supplies that the uterus has. Clear to you now? Now see, the tropoblast it does one most important thing. Got it? It gives out a rudimentary, rudimentary wall formation. Okay, that rudimentary wall formation is called Corion, what is called corion? It forms here. It comes what the word called cor c h o r i o n. Corion. I'm repeating. The uh, tubulblast doesn't take part in the formation of the embryo. That is correct. But it plays an important role in the formation of corion. C h o r i o n. Corion. What is corion? Corion leads to the formation of placenta, which unites with that of the mother. And corion cells produces hormones, which are most important in the development of the embryo. What are those hormones it produces? Human chorionic gonadotropin. I'll write in short. It is called H C G. Human chorionic gonadotropin. Yeah. So this is blastocyte, blastula formation. After that is the gestula. What happens in the gestulation? You are finding the occurrence of three layers: ectoderm, endoderm, and mesoderm. Three layers. Helps in the formation of different organs of the organism, like that we find the formation of kidney, heart, lungs, hand, nose, tongue. All these are done by the three germinal layers: ectoderm, endoderm, and mesoderm. Clear? Yeah? There is also occurrence of stem cells, inner cells from the stem cells, and that stem cell has the capability of forming different organs. Clear? By this time, what you are finding, you are finding in flux of huge amount of hormones inside the female reproductive system or the female body, like the progesterone, estrogen, prolactin. Cortisol, thyroxine. Why? To make the embryo, to get the sufficient amount and needed amount of nutrients and other things for the development. So that's all related with the post-fertilization changes that we find in case of human being after the fertilization. The changes that occur. Thank you.